Hi everyone and welcome to my fifth video in this little series on how to grow as a Christian. And in this video I want to talk about communion, sometimes called Holy Communion or the Lord's Supper or uh, the Eucharist. The Eucharist tends to be more of a, an Anglican thing really, but, uh, but there we go. What it's called doesn't really matter. Uh, this is a this is a subject which I've, to be honest with you, I've been a bit hesitant to do this video, mainly because, um, well, a couple of reasons really. For one, it's a little bit contentious. Um, this is the the Holy Communion. Uh, it is a subject which Christians do differ about exactly what is going on in communion, and I don't want to to kind of alienate anyone or say something which is going to be really contentious. Uh, also the passages, I've chosen a couple of different passages uh, from this from 1 Corinthians and these are perhaps not the most simple of passages. So, but, but I think that the main message of what I want to say is actually quite simple and straightforward and as we look at the passages I hope that that will come across. And I hope that I'm not going to say anything which is really contentious either and which Christians from sort of different denominations wouldn't be able to to agree on by and large. Um, I'm coming at this from an Anglican perspective and I'm a Protestant, I don't believe in the Mass uh, and I'm not going to go into that right now um, but I hope that by and large the Protestant uh, denominations would be able to agree with what I'm saying. I think there's just one thing which I'd like to say beforehand and um, this is another reason why I have been a bit hesitant to do this video, which is that for some people I think communion has become what church is about. You know, it's sort of become the primary thing. I think a lot of Christians from my tradition worry that if I say anything positive about communion and spiritual growth, then that will mean uh, be sort of taking a step in the wrong direction. Um, and you know, so we're sort of too afraid of saying anything that might be positive. And actually I think we can have confidence from the Bible uh, to say positive things about communion and, uh, and, and still not to, uh, not to go down the, the wrong road in making that the only thing about church which is sort of um, worthwhile, if you like. So with all that said, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, then uh, please do comment and I'll try and explain it better. Um, with all of that said, I'm just going to read a couple of passages from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10 and 11. And this is where Paul talks about Holy Communion in, the, in this letter. So 1 Corinthians chapter 10, reading from verse 14. And Paul says this, Therefore, my dear friends, flee from idolatry. I speak to sensible people, judge for yourselves what I say. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all share the one loaf. Consider the people of Israel. Do not those who eat the sacrifices participate in the altar? Do I mean then that food sacrificed to an idol is anything, or that an idol is anything? No but the sacrifices of pagans are offered to demons, not to God. And I do not want you to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. You cannot have a part in both the Lord's table and the table of demons. Are we trying to arouse the Lord's jealousy? Are we stronger than he? Now I appreciate that this passage is perhaps one of the more obscure ones uh, which I've chosen in this particular series. But the, the basic idea is that Paul is warning the Corinthian church from taking uh, food which has been sacrificed to idols as well as uh, participating in the Lord's Supper. Because Paul is saying, look, you can't worship idols and worship Jesus and take the Lord's Supper. No, you can't do it. It has to be one or the other. Now then he, he goes on to talk about other things and um, and about how Christians have, have freedom, 
but I'm, I'm not going to go into that. The, the, the point that he makes, which I want to focus on, is that the, the bread and the wine are what he calls is a participation in the body of Christ or the blood of Christ. You know, that there is something which is fundamental about the bread and the wine, which is not simply eating or drinking in a physical sense, but it is, has a deeper uh, spiritual sense. And, and in a sense, it kind of um, connects us with Christ. And this is why it's so important for the Corinthian church, for them not to eat the, the bread and the wine, as well as uh, this food which has been sacrificed to idols. And that's Paul's argument. And then he says, because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all share the one loaf. And again, this is sort of talking about that corporate dimension. You know, we thought about the church last week and how, you know, can you be a Christian by never coming to church? Sort of, but, but not really. Um, that actually there is something about sharing the bread and the wine together, which is important. Now, otherwise, you could just sit at home and have bread and wine yourself and remember Christ. But actually, there is something about doing it together, which is really important, that Paul says. And that's what he's talking about here. Really just saying, look, communion is, is a participation in the body and the blood of Christ. It is a significant thing going on here. So don't misuse it. And that's what he then goes on to talk about in the next passage that we look at uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, just in the next chapter. So in this chapter, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul is uh, sort of outlining, uh, correcting a problem that the Corinthian church are having with the Lord's Supper. And as part of that, he says this, and this is reading from verse uh, 23 onwards. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then... Whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and ill, and a number of you have fallen asleep. There we go. So this is... Paul talking about the, the Lord's Supper and he's basing what he says here on the, the importance he, that he talked about in the previous chapter about the bread and the wine. It's not simply eating and drinking bread and wine, but it is actually participating in the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death. Uh, until he comes. Now what does that mean? One of the things which I really like about the the Reformation and about what they uh, understood at the Reformation is that when you go to a church communion service you you hear the word preached, you hear the gospel preached in the words of the sermon, the Bible reading, uh, the hymns and, and other things and then you actually, there's a kind of the physical sign that the eating of the bread and the wine is like the physical sign of the gospel. And that's why it's called a sacrament. You know, it's sort of something done in, uh, in the body which represents something which happens spiritually. And that is what I, f I just find really powerful about this, uh, this actually, that as you eat the, the bread and the wine, it's kind of like a visible, physical demonstration of the gospel and something which backs up in a physical way what happens in the rest of the service. And this is, I think, what Paul is uh, is talking about here, proclaiming 
the Lord's death until he comes. And this is why it's important to eat and drink in a worthy manner. Now some people believe, and particularly from a Catholic perspective, that all you need to do is just simply eat the bread and drink the wine and that will be beneficial to you without any sort of um, faith on your part. And actually I think Paul would call very much caution against that view. And he would say actually that how our spiritual state is really important when we take uh, the communion to come with penitence, to come with faith, and that actually when we do come with faith and trust in God, then it is a, a hugely powerful thing in our lives because then we are participating in the body and the blood of, of the Lord Jesus. If we don't come with faith and if we don't come, then we are, uh, what he says, uh, we are eating and drinking uh, guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. The, the, the Book of Common Prayer puts it, you know, we eat and drink our own damnation if we, uh, if we do it without faith. But by uh, coming to the, the Lord's table, by coming to the bread and the wine with faith, trusting in Jesus Christ to forgive our sins, then it is effectual and then it kind of, it makes a difference. And that's really what I want to say in this video, is that the communion is not nothing. Now, I want to sort of caution, I guess, against the, uh, the two opposite extremes. One end is to say that communion doesn't really matter, and so, you know, you could sort of live without ever having communion. On the other end, there are people who kind of say that, oh, well, the church is only about communion. You know, every service has to be a communion service uh, because that's the only thing which the church, you know, the, the best and highest thing that the church does. So I want to say, pick a, a position between those two. I am an Anglican after all. And, and say, actually, I think that um, the communion is really important. Uh, it's not, you know, t crazy kind of most important thing that we ever do sort of thing. Um, but actually that it, there is something significant about taking the bread and the wine and sharing that with other believers and receiving, participating in the body and blood of Christ. So as we think about this with spiritual growth, I guess I want to, to leave it with you really to, to think about and to say, to consider that taking communion regularly, I mean not necessarily every week, but taking communion regularly is part of the, the duty of a Christian and part of the way that we grow as Christians. I have particularly valued, you know, in the church that I grew up um, and the churches mainly that I've been a part of, the communion is only really celebrated about uh, once a month. Now since coming here, uh, I've been um, going to our, our midweek service and I've been leading our, our midweek service where we have communion every week uh, there, or almost every week. And I've actually found that really beneficial, I think, just you know, sharing the bread and the wine. It's a really special time. Um, and I think that's something which, um, which is, is what God intends. You know, that actually to, to hear the word preached and proclaimed to us as, and to, to receive this sign, the bread and the wine, and to, to share it together is a, is a very significant event. And it's something which matters in our development and in our growth as Christians. Now, in the other videos, I've, I've given a link to some further reading or anything. Um, I don't really have any particular further reading when it comes to communion. I think the further reading which I have is actually to experience it. You know, some things are of limited value to read about. And in this particular instance, I think... The, the further reading is to actually do it and so um, you know to be part of that experience you know to go into a church uh, to to experience the uh, the way they do uh, they share the bread and the wine the prayers the uh, the words used and so on and to, to hear what is said in the Bible about it and actually to, to be to experience it rather than just simply to read about it I think some things in the Christian life, on life in general, I suppose, but some things in the Christian life are like that. You know, we need to experience them, and it's almost more than we need to, to know about them. 
And so that's what I would recommend if you want to, to know more about this, is actually to experience it and to, to take the communion regularly, which is, is according to, certainly in the Church of England, uh, according to canon law, is something which is just part of the duties of every Christian, to take the bread and the wine regularly uh, together. And this, is, uh, and this is something which is a fairly simple message, I hope, but nonetheless one which, uh, one which will make a difference. So um, that has been this. I'm, I'm sure this will probably leave you with many other questions and things, um, or, or perhaps not, I don't know. Um, do comment below if there are particular questions or particular things that you'd like to, to think about, and I'll do my best to try and explain. Um, and please do uh, like uh, the video and subscribe if you've enjoyed it and enjoyed this series. And uh, please do share it with, uh, with others as well who you think uh, might benefit. We've only got one more video in this uh, series, and then after that I'm going to have to think of something new to, to start doing um, other videos. If there's anything that you would find useful as well, then please do let me know, because I'm always looking and open um, for suggestions on different things which I could talk about. So thank you very much for listening. I appreciate that this has not perhaps been the easiest of uh, videos for me to record or, or for you to listen to perhaps. Um, but I hope that this has given you something to think about anyway, and I hope that you'll go away and think, read about what the Bible says, participate, and uh, that the Lord will bring us into wisdom in this area, as with all other things. So God bless for, uh, for the end of this video, and uh, I, I hope that uh, I'll see you again for another video uh, very soon.